And when I got the MT-09, my gut feeling was it was just, it handled just like an RD-400 with three engines. And I posted that up a couple of times on previous videos, and I got comments like, and one of them was, I don't know anything about math. If I did the math, I'd know that it was four engines. Well, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, but I do have a passion for motorcycles and video, and you can watch this in 4K. So one of the good memories I have of years ago, and it's a foggy memory, so I might be a little bit wrong, there was somebody back when I was involved in drag race in the 60s and 70s that built a drag bike with three Honda 750 engines, and they called it the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Not sure I got that all right, but I do have a vague memory of it. And I always thought, what could be cooler? Because a lot of people, we've even seen them at Ruts Hut, have made bikes with two engines. Mm, there was a, a double 750 Kawasaki there. I even have that on video. But a bike with three engines, wow. Now, what am I even thinking about this for? Because whenever I come out to the garage and I work on a bike so I get ready for a ride like I am right now, I always think, I love the way an RD400 handles. Light, nimble, quick. I love the bike. And believe me, I will never sell this puppy. But it would be nice if I had a little more power, which is what everybody wants. And surprisingly, when I got the MT-09, the first thing, it went right through my mind on the first ride. This is like an RD with more power. And I thought, yeah, well, they advertise what the power is, but it's not double, it's triple. So it is really like having an RD-400 that handles like an RD-400, but with three engines. And people that follow the channel for years know what I typically do, I pre-flight a bike, feed the fish, feed the birds, pick a few fresh flowers for Karen, check the farm out, and then usually something floats into my head, the topic of the day, whether it's Chrysler Hemis or Ferraris or, or whatever. And I never know what that's going to be until I got, get out to the garage, but that Atchison Topeka Santa Fe thing, it, it went through my mind. If anybody out there has a picture of that old bike with the old magazine, I, I do remember it, and maybe I, maybe I remembered it wrong. Maybe it's got Kawasaki engines or something, but I didn't forget it. And I always thought, what a cool name for a bike, too. If, if you know about trains, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe is the Santa Fe Railroad. Anyway, time to pre-flight and get out of here. It's not getting any cooler as this day unfolds. So as I'm getting ready, doing all farm chores, doing the things I have to do before every ride, because... My personal thing is I like to get back from a ride and get my feet up and relax. I don't like to come home and mow grass and do chores around the farm or pick tomatoes or whatever. Or getting a bike ready, pre-flight as always. Try to not be uh, not, not too lazy about checking things. And check the chain, of course. Check the oil. All the mundane things. But they all pay off. It's just the one time you find a low tire or a nail in a tire. And I found two of them on this bike already that I got did not even go out on the open road I caught them doing the pre-flight so it was lucky for me and I like to do that because of my background in aviation and being a an airplane owner of sorts here now the fish if I don't feed them of course there's hell to pay and they will not vote for me for a fish feeder of the year but Karen always has a few things in the garden that we like to take care of and this is once I make sure there's no bugs on the bike, usually on an MT-09, the exhaust tends to pick up little bugs. And watering the plants. If these plants, you miss one day of watering, and this temperature, and it's going to be over 90 degrees, probably halfway through this ride. So we want to get everything pre-flighted and ready and out on the open road. Every time I ride, I my mind starts to think about things that uh, I remember from the past. 
And one of the things uh, today, because I was thinking of that Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, I was thinking back to the trip we made to Florida with Ray to the Don Garlitz Museum and some of the dragsters he had uniquely with the engines mounted side by side in a V and different configurations of engines and TV Tommy Ivo with the four engine, four Buick engines. And I just think how cool all that is. But what's the ultimate cool is to have the horsepower of three engines, but only one engine to fuel and maintain altogether. also thinking an RD if you'd made one with three engines told them you could do it what would the mileage be <laughs> the mileage with one RD 400 engine is not great I don't know what it would be I don't want to put it to the test but I know this bike gets 50 miles to the gallon <laughs> Another thing, when you have a bike, if there were such a thing as a bike with multiple engines of any type, you'd have double the maintenance, double the oil changes, double the spark plugs, double everything. When you can have it all in one tidy little package like this that's maintenance free, it's better. <laughs> Yeah, I remember many times when drag racing was a lot more popular, seeing guys riding around with various bikes with the long swing arm a mile long. Maybe they still do in some circles. But I always wondered how bad or how good does a bike handle with one of those really long swinging arms? I don't know. I, I, never, I never rode one, and I don't know if the people telling me they handle good are being honest. As we go through the populated areas here, I am just so happy to have a quiet exhaust. And I know a lot of young guys, they love those loud exhausts, but to ride where I ride, a quiet exhaust is a giant advantage. Toward the middle of this ride, it got so hot, I didn't see any motorcycles. I was the only motorcycle out today, I think. I don't know, maybe the other guys have, maybe they have a little more common sense than I do. I don't know, it was hot. Now, because I wear prescription sunglasses when I ride or drive a car, this going in and out of the shadows can be, uh, well, a little more challenging than if you didn't wear them. That's, that's for sure. And one of the parts of the bike that I really think is just a little bit better than, uh, than you suspect is the seat for me it's comfortable it's in the right position and it's at the right height in relation to the pegs now if you look closely at the front of the bike there's four headlights there's two running lights and the blinkers are on the front blinkers are on all the time so you, this bike has really really good visibility One of the comments I always get, people see it and they see, oh, how would you polish that exhaust? Did you take it off, send it out, pay somebody to do it? No, I did it. And I did it while it was right on the bike. I made a video of doing it. Just look on my channel and search polishing the exhaust or polishing. It'll come up. It was not that big of a deal. <laughs> Over the 
winter, I made two seed cows. This one is on video, step by step, how to do it for anybody interested. It's carbon fiber. And really not a difficult first carbon fiber project if you're looking to get started doing your own carbon fiber parts. There's about 20 carbon fiber parts that I've made on a bike. I counted them one day. And to me, it just makes the bike a little special, unique, and my own. And my objective with all the customizing I do on any of the bikes is to make it look like the factory might have made this bike. I have a feeling, based on the comments that have come in on a video, maybe Yamaha could have made their bike a little more attractive right off the showroom floor. I don't know. But no matter how many bikes you have in your collection or how many engines you have in any bike or if you have drag bikes and dirt bikes and whatever, and street bikes, whatever. My objective at this point in my life, coming up on 79 years old, is I want to ride every day at least two hours in a perfect world, three or four, and try to beat the heat, stay in the shade, stay hydrated. I always take water with me on every ride. And I'm about burned out right now. And it's time to get on that comfortable seat and get back to the farm and see what Karen's got in the iced tea pitcher right now. Boy, the best part of every 90 degree day ride is when you get home and know that Karen's already stirring up a big glass of iced tea. It got hotter and hotter. It's just unbelievable how hot this is. I hope you did enjoy sharing a ride with us. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button if you did and thank you so much for watching